Yeah, it's 12 o'clock. It's afternoon now. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Chelsea Mann. I'm a field education trainer with Wella Professional. I'm coming at you from my studio uh, here in today's sunny yet still sharp and cold St. Albert, Alberta. Uh, I hope everybody's uh, doing well today. I know it's still... Uh, we're still, you know, doing the pandemic thing and we're still doing uh, all of our lockdown stuff. We, I want to give a shout out to all of our salons here in Alberta and across the country who, um, you know, are still, you know, suffering and enduring this lockdown that we have. We see you and we feel you and we're with you. And if you need anything, please reach out to us. Uh, we're here to help you guys. We have, at Wella, we have lots of education opportunities to offer you uh, to fill your time uh, while we're on lockdown. I know it's not the best case scenario. I know that everybody's uh, on edge about whatever announcements coming today in Alberta and all of that kind of stuff, guys. But, um, you know, we're, at, at Wella, we're in this with you guys. We, we see you. We see all of you. We see your comments. We see your struggle. And, and we're right there with you guys. So, uh, hoping for a, a good announcement uh, later on today. But uh, also to fill your time, guys, uh, during COVID, we've got something really amazing going on at Wella right now. Um, I wish I had sort of some music to play right now that it's the most wonderful time of the year. That's right. I just sang on Instagram Live. It is the most wonderful time of the year because it is competition season. And if anybody, any of you know me, you know that I love competition. I love, you know, to... Uh, put my art out into the world and I love to, uh, you know, see the, the sort of beauty in that vulnerability and, and all of that kind of stuff. I love to mentor. I love to, I just love this, this season and, um, you know, and watching all of the amazing creativity that comes out of our artists, uh, during our competition season is just so inspiring to me. Um, so I'm really excited today to be on here talking to you guys about Beauty and Vision Awards inspiration. And guys, I am very excited to tell you as well, I brought backup. I brought a friend of mine who's actually now, uh, for the second time, uh, a colleague of mine as well, somebody I used to work with a, a very long time ago in another day and time, uh, but who has also competed uh, many, many times right alongside me and had a ton, a ton of success. Uh, her in here. Um, and she, like I said, we used to work together, uh, and she's got a, a wealth of information, uh, about competition guys. There you are. How's it going? Hi everyone. <laughs> Is it snowing in Vancouver? Please. Jesus. Is it snowing? No, it's not. It is 12 degrees and sunny. <laughs> Jeez, 12 degrees. That's nearly bathing suit weather out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got a little, you're frozen a little bit. That's okay. I'll give you a second to sort of work it out. So I was just telling everybody that, uh, yeah, we're going to talk BEA awards today and, um, we're going to talk about inspiration. We're going to talk about how to enter. We're going to talk about how to nav navigate the website. We're going to do all of those things. So I just wanted to tell everybody, I know we have a few colleagues in the comments um, and things like that. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys have anything pops up while we're talking, uh, please don't be afraid to throw it up into the comments. We're watching. We're happy to answer your questions. Um, and just down at the bottom of your screen, there's a little uh, comment blurb with a question mark in it. If this is your first time on Instagram Live, um, that is called your question card. So you can just throw your question into there and we'll be happy to answer it. You can also slide into our DMs at any time at Wella Canada West. My Instagram is at Chelsea.Wella. Uh, so Mary Lynn, do you want to tell us a little bit about you and competition and where you come from and where you've been? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Lynn Rachel Perez. I'm a full-time education trainer with the Wella Company, and I'm in Vancouver, BC, as Chelsea has said. 
Um, <laughs> actually, it's pretty good out here, not gonna lie. <laughs> Your Canucks beat our Oilers last night, my daughter told me this oh. morning. So. Well, I don't follow <laughs> hockey, so I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'm a Montreal fan, so I don't care either way. <laughs> Me too, not going to lie. <laughs> so guys, I have been competing since 2012, and Chelsea and I have actually competed together, which is kind of great. This is why we've joined together to talk about this. My background a little bit is, like I said, I started in 2012, and I started in a salon in Ottawa, and I was a fairly recent kind of stylist just kind of learning you know the ropes and I was nudged a little bit into it so intimidated scared all of the above <laughs> wasn't my cup of tea to be honest but I did it and a little nudge from my team and my boss at the time otherwise I probably would have never done it but to be honest with you today I think it has made me a better stylist and I've grown from it and I think that it is something every stylist should try so do you think, Marilyn, I'm going to go a little off script here. Sorry, I know you like specifically asked me not to do this, but I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> do you, like, in what ways do you think you, like, grew? Because I remember I was there when, uh, you know, sort of you had some nerves around competing and it was a bit of a situation. So mm -hmm. do you, uh, like, what sort of things do you think that, in what sort of ways do you think that you grew from that sort of nudge, as you put it, into competition? Um, I think the first thing is it taught me a lot of things about a being a stylist that I probably didn't know that I could learn, right? Because being a stylist, at one point, we think we know it all, but we really don't. So I think it taught me a lot about color, taught me a lot about color correction. Um, it taught me how to be creative. It taught yeah. me like the creative side of being a stylist, which behind the chair, we kind of get stuck in our ways and kind of follow the same routine all the time, because sometimes clients don't want to step out of the box. So I feel like that just gave me a nudge to be more creative and open up to different things that I probably wouldn't have if I didn't compete. Amazing. So I, it's, it's funny because I, I remember, like Marilyn said, everybody, we used to work at the same salon uh, in Ottawa for a long time um, and competed and traveled and all of that kind of stuff together. And all of these years later, it's funny to sort of be back in this, in this totally. studio again, it's funny in an amazing way. Exactly. Um, totally. But I feel the same way. I feel like from having competed and, and in this competition and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, we grew so much just as as artists and but as as people as well. Like, you know, I think a lot of times in when somebody is maybe has never competed before and they're a little nervous about it, their anxiety sort of takes over and they're like, oh, my God, there's so many steps. What do I do? How do I do this? What happens when I, you know, get to, if I make it to the finals? What do I do then? And all this kind of stuff. Right. I think the biggest thing I learned uh, in that sort of that sort of way in managing my anxiety around around competing was just to sort of take what's in front of me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like take those yeah. steps one at a time. And if you have a list of 800 things you have to do and you're on number six, you don't need to worry about number 573, right? Agreed. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So let's talk about how the competition has evolved because um, you and I both know that this competition used to be called Trend Vision. We used to use that word a lot. And yes. uh, it used to be that we had two trends and two categories and that's all that there was, right? Do you remember those days? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it being a lot of like copy and paste. Like I remember there being a lot of like, you know, entries where that we would see where people would just copy the looks that they were given, right? Do you remember that? Correct. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. yeah, totally. So I find now that there's a lot more freedom in the in the BEA awards to sort of be yourself. You know, there's a lot more categories and there's a lot more ability to be inspired rather than just repeat a look that somebody else has created. Would you agree? Yes, totally. Yeah. So a lot. Oh, for sure. Right. So, yeah. and I mean, I think to go to go back to the point that we sort of made earlier about not getting ahead of yourself, I think the people that are watching right now and if, jump in, if you have insight here, um, I think the important thing at this point is, you know, to know the rules and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah. at this point, not to get bogged down with, you know, if I enter my photo and then I get chosen, what's the next step and what's the next step? We're going to talk about that stuff today. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to like, you know, to take it from Wayne's world, live in the now, <laughs> you know? Agreed. I think that sometimes we get overwhelmed by the process. We get overwhelmed from, you know, where to start from point A to point B. So I think you're totally right in that sense, because that was 
how I felt when I first started competing. And I think over time, it just gets easier. And now I think things are a lot different in the competing world. And I think it's evolved quite a bit. Totally. And I think as a company too, well, I think yeah. we stepped in and said, you know, this is this, there's a, a very sort of high stress element around this that yeah. as a company, maybe we could structure it a little bit differently to yeah. make the pathway to entry a lot smoother and easier, right? Correct. Yeah. So l let's talk about your step one there. I see a little bit of step one behind you there because I think uh, I think step one is really inspiration. People jump straight into like model selection, which those of you that are on that are waiting for me to talk about that, I am going to talk about it. You're just going to have to sort of stay on with me here. Um, but step one really is inspiration. You know, so how do you get inspired to create a look for BEA? So as you guys can see here behind me, um, I kind of made a mood board and there are many ways of doing it. Now there's some people that are really hands-on and want to create kind of what I did where you see, I did a collage. Now I did a very simple one, um, but, and, and also the inspiration of color and stuff, right? So it all depends. I know with technology nowadays, more people want to do it with technology, which is completely fine as well. Um, in my case, like I said, what I did here is I, I took some, I kind of looked at the trends to see, like for me, I, I like to compete in color. So I would look at, you know, photos or Pinterest or, you know, a magazine stuff that would inspire me with color tones, movement. Um, also, if you go in and look in at, you know, um, landscape, terrain, um, stuff like that, where you can see, and you can see here on my iPad, guys. Like this kind of like, like color movement, right? Yeah. You know, just some inspirations from other photos that will start to kind of get your mind going with things, right? So you can know, okay, like I like that movement and it'll give you ideas on how to start kind of playing where you want to create your look from. And, and I, I feel think that this is like, when you showed me the, the mood board earlier, I think that was one of my favorite things about it is that it's not just like, yes, there's hair inspiration there I can see on the iPad. There's hair inspiration there and there's color inspiration, but it's not all hair stuff. Like I know I get really inspired when I travel. I get really inspired when I'm in nature, things like that. So um, I love that your vision boards or your mood boards, same sort of difference, um, have things for inspiration on them that aren't just fashion or hair, you know? Yeah, and to be honest, like it could be fashion based, right? Because you're gonna want to put a, a costume if you make it and live, and you're doing it on stage. So all those things play a part. So that's why, like you can see, you know, there's landscape, then there's you know wardrobe, there's hair, there's you know colors, all kinds of things that kind of just get your brain going and get your ideas kind of flowing. So this is just to start creating where you want to go with this, basically. Totally. So for those of you that are on or that are going to watch this later that have never done a vision board, a vision board or a mood board is something that we put together that sort of collects all of uh, all of our ideas in one space and that you can access at any time to sort of reboot that inspiration piece, Correct. right? Like yeah. um, I used to do, Mary Lynn and I unfortunately are no longer eligible to compete in the BEA awards because we worked for Wella and that would be cheating. But <laughs> Um, when we used to compete, I don't know about you, Marilyn, but I used to make my vision boards and I would hang them on the, I lived in a little studio apartment when we lived in Ottawa and I used to hang it on the back door, like the back of the door of my apartment. So every day when I left for work, I would see it and it was like in my mind at the front of my mind all the time. Right. Correct. Yeah. I'm the same way. Like, I think that, you know, keeps kind of working your brain every time to kind of keep putting pieces of the puzzle together. Cause at the end of the day, it's a bit of a puzzle. And then once you have that, and then you move on to other stuff, like getting your model and stuff like that, then things slowly, then you can always go back to your vision board to kind of like, oh, okay, my model has these features and these colors and color tones and whatever. And then slowly those pictures will come together. Totally. And that's like your inspiration. So that helps create your look. So I, I agree with Chelsea. I always had mine out to remind myself of where I kind of want to go with this. Totally. Would you say that your vision board is the space where you can go to like reground? Agreed. A hundred percent. Now, I, I think it's cool, too, that you did, like, what what we see there in the back is sort of a, a, for lack of a better term, sort of an arts and crafts mood board. This is how we did it before the internet, right? Yep. <laughs> we, got the we got the wine and the magazines out and usually had a little session. Sometimes that happened in a hotel room. And some people uh, prefer that over 
over, you know, the technology, right? So these for the, the people that want to stay with the hands on touch and feel because as stylists were very touchy feely kind of, this is the way we always did it. And it, it always worked really well for us. So totally. And I used to put, uh, there were times where I made a vision board that it was all stuff from a magazine. I've seen people put like fabric on theirs yes. or flower petals or yeah. like I watched somebody attach a zipper to a vision board one time and then she ended up um, making it all the way to the finals because she kept going back to that zipper and incorporated it into the final look. Shout out Courtney. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but I, like, I guess my point is that if you're going to do uh, like a tactile or a, a, a tangible vi a vision board like that, yes. um, that it's, you're not limited to just cut and paste from a magazine or printing right. things out. You can take pieces. I've seen people with uh, dirt and like gravel, like pieces yes. of rock on theirs as well and this, comes back, to, this comes back to the touch and feel right as stylists we touch and feel hair all the time so i totally agree that any type of texture of any kind can like trigger your your thoughts into where to go with this you know with the look that you want to create so materials anything like that will give you more ideas more inspiration so the more the better totally I I watched somebody actually, uh, a stylist here in Alberta, who put a vision board together that was, it's a, it was based on, this is very Alberta, her idea was based mm -hmm. on the colors of this one cow she had on her farm, <laughs> which seems random, but it worked and the final look was really good, but she had a piece of fur on her vision board, which I thought was really neat as well, right? So I guess my point is that don't be limited. If you're going to do a tactile vision board, don't limit yourself to, um, you know, cut and paste from a magazine. You can put anything you want on there. That's such a, a, a freeing part of, you know, of competition work is that you're not bound by the restrictions of the client's needs or salon life or timing. You really can just, you know, allow your hands to do the work that your brain can conceptualize, right? So I think it's cool too, if we're using our high tech tools, if we're using our iPad or our phones, which everybody is doing, um, could you create these vision boards digitally as well if you're not an arts and crafts kind of person? Absolutely. Mm. Pinterest, gotta love Pinterest. Really, Pinterest is the easiest <laughs> one. Pinterest is the easiest one because you can find every single category you're looking for. You can go from you know, color to hair to paint mm. to landscape to anything you want to create the mood you want to go forward with this by going into the BEA and finding the look you want then Pinterest is your guide you will find everything you want you can also venture off from Pinterest it doesn't only have to be Pinterest but mm. Pinterest has a lot of resource to help you create the look that you would like totally um and I for everybody watching I know most people that have Instagram also have the layout app uh, so the layout app is also really good for creating vision boards. If you're taking things off of Pinterest, if you don't want to have a Pinterest board, you want to have something in your photos or whatever. I've seen people create collages on the layout app uh, and use that as their vision board as well. So uh, completely reasonable thing to do. So I think um, that's, if, you know, if we're talking about how to how, like inspiration and how to get into this, that's really step one is to, is to, get your inspiration going, you know, get your vision board going and get all of those things. Now, the question then becomes, where do we find the inspiration? Right? Correct. So I think the, the next thing we need to talk about is the Beauty and Vision Awards website. Have you been on the website? Yes, I have. And yeah. I was, you know, there, there are different, there are mood boards already attached, actually, to the, to the site itself. So you can kind of figure out from step one, what look you want to do. And then totally. there's already mood boards on there, which is awesome. We never had that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of cool, right? It's, it's, it's a new way and it, it already starts. Once you choose your category, you already have kind of a path to follow and you can just grow from that path. So it, it's a really cool website. We didn't have that when we were competing. We did not. Do you remember the first year that we competed where we had to send in like the books, the handwritten books and they yeah. pure later lost them and they almost didn't make it. Do you remember that? We actually oh. had to send in our mood board too. Do you remember that? Yes, we it was so crazy. <laughs> we had to put out a full mood board, you know, times 10 of this, and it had to have all your inspirations. Like there was a lot of work into this, not only the 14 hours of doing a model and a photo shoot and everything else in between, 
<laughs> it was it was quite the work to, to complete. Well, and back in the day, we had to walk to the photo shoots and snow yes. uphill both ways with no shoes. Like, that's yeah. why I live in Vancouver, everybody. Yes. So you yes. know. <laughs> oh, geez. So yes, so the beauty and we have the, a few questions. Oh, sure, go for it. All right, I'm just gonna see. Uh, I have to go back here. I didn't even see any pop up on the comments. I thought I saw a few. Maybe just quickly look before we lose them all. That's okay. You go for it. Um, okay, maybe not. That's okay. All right. So Welcome. just as a reminder, guys, for whoever's watching, if you missed it at the beginning, if you guys have questions, you're, you're free to throw them into the comments. We're watching them or that we use the question cards at the bottom. We're happy to answer whatever you guys have, okay? Yeah. So if we're talking about Beauty and Vision Awards, we have to talk about the website. So the website is really the central spot where you can go to find information. So it's beautyandvisionawards.com. Now I'm going to put this into the uh, comments right now. Just give me a second. Awards. Now it's going to autocorrect me. Dot com. Post. There we go. Um, I put it as the pinned comment now. Okay. Um, so you guys can head over to that website. It's really the central place where you're going to find information on Beauty and Vision Awards. So everything to do with Beauty and Vision Awards is on there. R full rules and regulations. So if you guys have any questions about rules and regulations and specific questions, you absolutely can reach out to us at any time. But really, I, I mean, I don't know about you, ML, but we don't really have the capacity to memorize all of the rules and regulations. <laughs> No, so that's the best thing is to go to the site and there's a lot of info on there. We can help as much as we can, but it, there's a lot of details in there that you're best to just go to the site to get the nitty gritty stuff that you'll totally. need. Totally. So once you go to the website, the website looks like this, okay? So I'm not going to read this and go through all of this with you guys. I imagine that everybody has the opportunity to do this. And if you don't, if you don't have a device, your internet's not working, whatever, reach out to us. I'll screenshot everything and send it to you. It's totally fine, okay? Now, if you head to your, if, you, if we're on the Beauty and Vision Awards website, right at the top there, you can see it says categories. I'm going to click, click on, cat oh, I'm already there. I'm going to click on categories and it's going to bring me up to where ML found her inspiration for the vision board she put together. So here we are on categories, okay? If I scroll through, it's gonna give us all the categories we have. Now there are 13 different categories, okay? So we've got color categories for US and Canada. We've got creative categories. We've got uh, avant-garde categories. There's a barbering category and a bridal category and a student category. There's a salon team category. There's an elite category, which you have to be invited uh, to, um, to enter. Um, and there's so much opportunity on the website to uh, explore the categories and figure out which space that you belong in as a stylist, right? This is so another, much this different is than when we were young. This is another thing Chelsea can probably vouch for. We didn't have that. <laughs> we weren't so lucky to have the variety that they have today right so the there's so many different categories and this is what makes this one even funner because you can broaden your horizon with with where you want to go with your vision when we were competing we had four categories or two yeah so it was really down to like you really had to choose the right one for yourself now and we used really to good. agonize like which category does this belong in because it exactly. was like a styling category or a color category that was Agreed. it right i agree so we've really really expanded here guys there's tons and tons of categories so if we go to i'm going to click on this one right here this is the canadian color category so if we click on that one i'm going to click on learn more okay and then it's going to take me to the page just for the Canadian, sorry, I'm trying to avoid my ring light there. Just for the Canadian color category, it's gonna give you um, wording on it and, and a little bit of inspiration, okay? Um, but from the category page, guys, if I go back to where I was before here, underneath there, you can see that it says, check out the mood board on Pinterest, okay? So if I click on that, it's going to take me to Pinterest, right? to the mood boards um, for this category, for the inspiration, it's right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna do, oh, it's asking me to log in now. Um, <laughs> so there, 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 but. there you go, there's tons of pictures on there and it's kind of similar to what I've pulled up here versus it's just digital, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and there's tons of inspiration you guys can, what, this is what's great about Pinterest, is you guys can take those looks that you sort of saw there um, and you can um, like pin them to your own Pinterest boards and right on Pinterest, create your own vision board and start to create your own look. It'll exactly. really, and I know ML, you probably get this question a lot too. I very often have people saying to me like, you know, where do I find pictures and what are they looking for, right? right? I learned a long time ago, as I know you did, ML, to let go of the idea of what are they looking for, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's never going to be exactly what they're looking for. I don't think you can please anybody at touching all the points because you're also your own person and you're also going to create your own look, right? So I think the best thing is to follow all the instructions of the trend that you've chosen. And from that point on, make sure that you've you know, touched all the, the points and then go from there and create your own look because there's nobody that can tell you how to create your own look and it's your vision. So that's, that's right. important. That's right. We want to see how you envision beauty, which is where the, the name was born from. So I hope that's helpful guys with the website. Um, there's so much information on those Pinterest boards. There's lots of, of, of stuff like that on the website. It really is the central place where you're going to go for that inspiration piece. So really guys for on how to get started and how to get inspired into BEA, you need to start with this, this idea of mood boarding and however that looks like to you. Right. Um, and then once you have your mood boards done, you can head back over to the website and make sure that you're following all the rules and regulations, which I'm going to talk a little bit about now. Um, and then you're off to the races. I also encourage all of you, uh, if you have a relationship with an educator, you can reach out uh, to an educator or a salesperson. Uh, please do that because we really do have um, a ton of, of information and insight uh, and mentoring that we can do to help you through this process. Absolutely. Right? If anybody has questions or anything that I or Chelsea can help with or any of our educators, like she said, feel free to reach out. We're here to help. Always, always. So ML, I know you have to get in the car driving. I know we had a very small window of time. I, today. I appreciate you being on. I'm going to stay on and talk more awesome. about how to's and website. So don't go anywhere, guys. I am staying on to talk more about rules and model selection and all that stuff. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for, for joining me today. Um, and I look forward to, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to talk to you later today. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. I hope that what I brought on was helpful. And like I said, if there's any questions, feel free to reach out. And you guys are in good hands. Chelsea will lead the way from here. Have a awesome. great week, everybody. Talk to you Safe soon. Thanks, Bye. Okay, so uh, that was Mary Lynn. She, again, is our, uh, she's essentially the Vancouver Chelsea with Nichelle. Um, so if you guys have questions or wanted to reach out to her, uh, her Instagram handle is at hair by Mary Lynn. Um, so we're going to talk, I hope that was clear about the website. Okay. And just, um, I wanted to show you guys a little bit. I couldn't do it with Mary Lynn on. And now that she's not on anymore, she can't stop me. This is Mary Lynn competing. So this is, this is at the finals. Um, I think we're in Vegas in this picture. Um, and that's her also competing, creating a look backstage, which was really, really fun to watch. And then that's her model, her and her model walking on the runway. I'm sure I'm going to get an angry text message that I'm showing you these pictures shortly, but uh, that's also part of the look uh, that she created. Okay. Um, so I wanted to go uh, back through this guy. So this is what the homepage of the website looks like when you go to beautyandvisionawards.com. Okay. Uh, once you're there, you're going to, oh, I think my, if, if you can move my face over, there's a three line menu drop down behind my screen there. Once you go to the drop down menu, you're going to pick on categories there. This is from a mobile device, guys. Um, then you're going to be able to go to and view the categories. Okay, again, the categories look like this. That's just a screenshot of what the US one looks like. Underneath, there's the Canadian one. Underneath there is going to be the, the ability to, oh, yeah, I circled it. I, uh, Instagram's kind of screwing with me here, but um, underneath there is where you're going to be able to access the Pinterest boards. And then the Pinterest boards look like this. So once you're on Pinterest, you'll be able to click on there to take you to the inspiration. And one of the screenshots of the inspiration looks like this. So I want to draw your attention, guys, when you're putting together your vision boards. Um, of, of course, I need to put my glasses on because I'm a grandma and I can't see anything. There we go. Um, of course, we're seeing hair color. We're seeing a bright pink there. We're seeing a little bit of stenciling work uh, going on there and, and things like that. 
But I also want to draw your attention to shape. Okay, so bottom right there, my, my right could be your left, I'm not really sure. Uh, we see sort of a, a, a exaggerated side sweep and a nice sort of shape like that. I encourage you guys to remember that when you're uh, shooting, and I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but when you're shooting, uh, it's important to understand things like balance. Um, it's important to understand things like symmetry, okay? In certain times, there is a time and a space for asymmetry as well, okay? Um, but I encourage you guys to remember these things when you're putting together your BEA entries that um, paying attention to these things is important. Now that leads me to something else that I think is really important. When I shoot for the competitions that I compete in, um, I don't pay attention to any of those things myself at all. And except for when it comes to wardrobe, because I do all of my own wardrobe and styling. Um, I will tell you the reason that I don't pay attention to those things is because I have a spectacular team. I think the, uh, the acquisition of a good photographer and makeup artist is super, super important, uh, because then I can say to those people, this is my vision. Um, and they are on board, they study it as well, they get copies of my mood board, or I send it to them digitally if I can. Um, so that when we're shooting, we're all on the same page, we make sure that um, the vision's being executed. And at that point, the hairdresser can hairdress, the photographer can photograph, the makeup artist can make up, and you put it all together. And it's, you know, we're a team, right? Those of you that have shot with me before, my photo shoots are very a uh, high energy, they tend to be a little bit intense, uh, because I believe that it's important when you're competing uh, to leave it all on the floor. You want to leave everything there and you're gonna go home and you're gonna be emotionally, creatively, and mentally exhausted. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. Usually on the way home from my shoots, I like pick up enough Kentucky Fried Chicken for eight people and I go home and I'm full of regrets the next day. But I'm never waking up the next day going, I wish I would have tried this or I wish I would have done that, right? You have to stay clear to your vision and make sure that you have a team around you that uh, also understands your vision, right? So like I said before, step number one, vision boards. We need to put that vision board and that look together, whether you're doing it in a tactile way or digitally. Either way, it's totally fine. Your next step is to, is to make sure you're heading over to the website and lining your vision up with the inspiration that is on the website, beautyandvisionawards.com. It's the pinned comment uh, on this live right now. Um, and if you guys, if you guys forget that, you can't find it, whatever, go ahead and DM us at Wella Canada West or at Chelsea.Wella. I'm happy to help. Okay. Once you guys are there, once you've done your vision and you're sort of lining up in your mind how you want your look to come together, um, it's important at that point to make sure that you have a good team in place. You need to hire a good photographer. You also need to hire a good makeup artist. Now, have I seen people do their own makeup for um, Beauty and Vision Awards? totally there's nothing wrong with this okay if you are somebody who's good at makeup or you have somebody that works at the salon that you work at that does makeup go for it this is what i am capable of with makeup okay <laughs> and there's a filter on this right now so is it a good idea for me to do models makeup for beauty and vision awards or for competition no i need to focus on hair so i think a good makeup artist and a good photographer is worth their weight in gold now i have also seen somebody win a competition with the photo that they took with their phone Okay, so if you are somebody who very, who's probably younger than me, totally fine. I believe that aging is a privilege, so it's all good. Um, but if you are somebody who understands all the functionality of your iPhone, you guys can go ahead and shoot it on your own. You know what I mean? I have some really great space down here in my studio. I'm gonna take a chance here and flip you guys around. If I was shooting for my own models here in my studio, I'd be shooting them in this corner right here. That's the corner you know, where my, in my studio and all my walls are white. So there's a backdrop there, you know, maybe do a little bit of Photoshopping and then you're all good, right? It doesn't, my point guys is that it doesn't have to be like when Mary Lynn and I used to compete years ago, it was this big production, right? It was this big high stress sort of weekend where we had to get all this stuff done, which is fine. Some people really thrive in that environment where they get the whole team together and they bang it out in a weekend totally fine, right? But if you're somebody who maybe needs to have your own time and space and you want to work at your own speed, there's nothing to say that you can't shoot this yourself with your phone in your basement like me, right? So I think that's my next point is that you got to figure out which camp you belong to. Do you want to hire a team and, you know, and, and shoot it that way? 
Or do you want to put the skills that you have in just organically being able to use the settings on your phone and put a look together, right? Fun fact, guys, it doesn't cost anything to enter the Beauty and Vision Awards. Zero. It costs zero dollars. Okay? And I mean that. There's no catch there. It costs nothing to enter the Beauty and Vision Awards. Okay? And that brings me to my next point. When you're ready to enter, when your photo is ready. Now, my photographer and makeup artist costs money. Okay, fine. But if you're doing it all on your own, it doesn't cost you anything. And my point is that the entry itself costs nothing. Okay. So when your entry is ready and you're ready to, uh, actually, you know, put it into the competition, you're going to put it up on Instagram. It's that easy. Okay. So you're going to put your picture up on Instagram. Uh, you're going to use the appropriate hashtags, which this is on the information for this is on beauty and vision awards.com guys. Every category has its own hashtag that you put in the caption. Okay. Not the comments in the caption of your photo so that we can find it. Okay, I believe, I believe there's also watermarks on there that you can use, but it's not mandatory, okay? Um, and then you put it up on Instagram and you're done. That's it, that's all. You guys can enter as many categories as you want. You can enter as many photos as you want. I encourage you not to take a single photo and enter it in all the categories. That's not really what we're looking for, okay? Um, you, but I really want you guys to feel free and empowered that this doesn't have to be a big, stressful, crazy thing, okay? Now, I also want to talk about model selection, okay? Because this is like sort of a hot button issue that I talk to a lot of people about, okay? When it comes to model selection, guys, people ask me all the time, uh, how do you pick a model, Okay? Uh, sorry, I have a question in the question card. Somebody's asking me, can you uh, put multiple captions in one photo as multiple entries or do you have to post the photos multiple times? This is a great question. Um, I, to be completely honest with you, I'll have to go back and read the finer points on the rules and regulations for this one. But if I was a betting man, I would, my money says that if you're going to do that, we want to see individual entries with individual hashtags. That's my official answer. Um, but you'll read through the finer points of the rules and regulations to find the answer to that one. Okay, so thank you for your question. Uh, so let's talk about model selection. People ask me all the time, how do you pick a model? Where do you find a model? Because it seems to be this like anxiety inducing sort of process, right? Now I'll tell you guys, COVID has changed the model selection game. Okay, just like it's changed all of our lives in many different ways. Okay, uh, simply because you can't just be like, oh, do you want to come to the salon? Like you just straight can't do that in, in Alberta right now. You know, <laughs> um, so uh, it's definitely changed the uh, the model selection game, right? Um, I do think it's important to note that you can use mannequin heads that you could do it last year and you can do it again this year. If you want to use a mannequin head to create an entry, go for it. Um, all of our final looks last year were created on mannequin heads because of COVID. Um, and I think it went really well. I watched some of our artists, especially our, our artists uh, here in Alberta that I mentor that I'm so, so proud of all of you. Um, I watched them put together mannequin heads that man, if you didn't look super close, you wouldn't have known it was a mannequin. They had sunglasses on and clothes and faces of makeup wiped off and then reapplied with markers and paint. And it's just the creativity, guys. I know that COVID is not ideal, but the creativity that is coming out of this is out of this world, guys. And we see you and I'm proud of you and keep it coming. I'm excited. So all of that to say, you can use a mannequin head. Go for it, okay? Um, if you can, if you're in, in an area that you can be around other people, please take the proper precautions, use your PPE. Let's not, you know, make, make this situation, uh, you know, worse by taking a chance when we don't need to. Okay. So if you're using a live model, please pay attention to the rules and regulations in your area and abide by those. Uh, that being said, guys, when it comes to model selection, um, I don't think that there's any one right answer. Okay. I prefer personally. I curate, I shouldn't say that, I choose models based on the uh, curated looks I'm going for for that season. That, uh, meaning that uh, the, the, the collection that I'm about to create or the look that I'm about to create sometimes dictates the model, right? Sometimes dictates what I'm looking for, right? Uh, so for example, if you're doing, if you're planning on doing a look that's sort of a, a bowl cut or something that's super, super smooth, um, maybe somebody with uh, like very straight sort of wiry hair might be easier to work with than somebody with like super curly hair, right? 
Um, we have one of our newest categories in the Beauty and Vision Awards is our texture category, uh, where we want to see natural curl. We don't want to see uh, textured hair that's been straightened and then re-curled. We want to see that natural curl and how we're working with it. Uh, so obviously that requires a model with curly hair, right? Uh, so I, I know people are always waiting for me to talk about model standard and all of that kind of stuff. I don't have that. We don't require that. You heard it here and I'll say it over and over and over again, guys. We do not require model standard female models. If you want to use a male model, go for it. If you want to use a trans model, go for it. If you want to use a male model in what would traditionally be a female category, go for it. There are no, uh, no rules and regulations when it comes to that sort of thing. Other than that, you know, we want to see, other than in the salon team category, we want to see one model per picture, right? But we're not dictating what's beautiful to anybody else. It's in the eye of the beholder, okay? Or in the internal workings of the person, right? So to, my point is choose a person that inspires you, right? I look for models who, uh, who are, have an amazing attitude. That's my first criteria. If you have a bad attitude, I, I just, I can't, I don't have time. I, it's not my job to raise you. If you have a bad attitude, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put up with it on shoot day. I don't do that. Okay. So I look for people that have an amazing attitude and who understand the project and, are, and want to work with me on the project because the model really is an integral part of the team. Okay. I like to, um, I like to look for models. I thank you from Winnipeg. We see you. Love you. Um, I, oh, and I meant to say hi to Diana. I saw your comment earlier as well. Um, I look for models who are uh, exotic looking. I don't like to shoot uh, models who are, um, I, maybe exotic looking is the wrong word, are too sort of run of the mill. And uh, sometimes that doesn't come from the way that they look. Attitude comes a across a lot in, and personality comes across a lot in the, you know, when somebody's shooting you with a camera, right? So I look for people who are just generally different. And that doesn't mean that they have piercings all over their face or their skin's a certain color or they come from a certain place. I just, I get a feeling from somebody and they fit the project and, and I go from there. It doesn't matter, you know, their dimensions don't matter to me. Their height doesn't matter to me. Their weight doesn't matter to me. Their gender doesn't matter to me. I could keep going, but I imagine you guys get the point. None of that stuff matters to me. I look for great attitude. Obviously, I look for hair that makes sense for the project. I'm not, again, not going to take a curly haired model for something that's supposed to be smooth unless their hair straightens really well. You know what I mean? Um, but I want you guys to choose people that inspire you. I want you to choose uh, somebody because of, of them, not because of, you know, because you think that we're looking for you know, traditional. We're looking for, for you. We're looking for what inspires you. We're looking for your vision of beauty. And when we're talking about visions of beauty, guys, there is no right or wrong. There isn't. Um, so, you know, you choose who inspires you is my point. Okay. Um, so I think at this point, guys, we're talking about inspiration, vision boards, get on that. Okay. Check out the website that you can link to all of the Pinterest inspiration straight from the website. Okay. Then you're going to make sure you either have a team in place or you feel as far as photographer and makeup artist, or you feel like you are equipped at understanding the settings on your phone to be able to shoot it yourself. Okay. Um, once that's done, we need to make sure that we have a model or a mannequin head. Okay. And we understand, sorry, my underneath of my nose is itchy, uh, that we understand uh, what we're working on and what hair we're working on. Um, I always like to make sure that my models, if I'm working on a real person, understand the time commitment. Um, I don't like it when models say to me, I have to be done to pick up my kid at four o'clock. I'm a mom too. I get it. Picking up the kid. I get it. Um, but I need to not be stressed out by other people's time commitments. I need somebody to be with me all day. Okay. Um, and then once that's done, guys, you need to pick your shoot date um, and you need to get getting get creating, get creative. And let's see it guys. We want to see your vision of beauty. Okay. Uh, for those of you that are asking me, uh, and are going to ask me, <laughs> uh, about entry deadlines and opening and all of that stuff. I really want to drive you guys to the website, beauty and vision awards.com. It is the pinned comment on this live. Um, all of your information is on there. You guys can ask me any questions at any time, feel free, but please, please, please use that website. We have gone as a company, gone to great lengths to make that website what it is. Um, and it's such a great central place uh, for information. 
Okay. So I'm just about out of time, guys. I wanted to say thank you guys so much uh, for joining me today. I hope that you guys are excited as uh, about BEA Awards as I am. Um, I know there'll be a lot of questions about what happens afterwards, but I encourage you guys to, you know, get going on that first photo round and understand that if you don't nail the photo, if you don't nail the first step, there is nothing after that. So let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but I, excuse me, will tell you before I sign off that if you are successful in our first round, you become a semi-finalist. After that is the finalist round. If you are chosen as a finalist, um, you will be asked to create a, a look for our live final show. Um, and then with a few exceptions, like the salon team category and the elite category, the top prize in each category, guys, is five grand. Five grand. That's nothing to sneeze at, guys. That's a lot of money. I don't know about the rest of you, but that's a good day for me. I'm just saying. Five grand, right? Um, and we had somebody in Alberta win it last year. Woohoo! Shout out Lauren. Yay. Um, so it's a big day, guys. It's, an, it's a big prize. Um, and it's totally a worthy endeavor, okay? Uh, so I, again, all of this stuff is on the website. And I encourage you guys to remember when you're putting your looks together that competing isn't about the win. Okay. I've been on that stage and had them, you know, hand me the award and all of that kind of stuff. And it's fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a fun moment. It really is. Uh, but it's not why we compete. We compete because the, as artists, you know, what we do every day is something that other people don't understand. Right. And in the salon, we're confined by the, the, the stylists, the other stylists around us and time constraints and what the clients want and things like that. In competition, guys, you get to just be you. You get to just be an artist and you get to just, you know, be vulnerable and put that out into the world. And, you know, I had this conversation with a very beautiful artist from Ontario named Jerrica, hey girl, the other day um, uh, that I think it's important to understand that part of being an artist for a living is putting yourself out into the world with the full knowledge that somebody, that other people are going to reject you. Um, and that's okay. It's, it's okay if nobody ever understands your art. It's okay if you don't win. The win is secondary. Competing is about being vulnerable and the beauty that exists in vulnerability. It's about networking with the artists around you. It's about being better and setting higher standards for yourself and being a better artist tomorrow than you were today. And that's all, that's all anybody can ask of their creative endeavors. So um, all of that to say, guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you guys have a little bit more grounding and where to go for information. I have another live coming up uh, in, I think in a month or so. Stay tuned to Wella Canada West for the dates on that. Uh, where I'm going to talk more about uh, about BEA awards and how to enter and what to do more of that nitty gritty stuff. I really want you guys to get started with your inspiration. So tune in again uh, for uh, for that live. Uh, I know, like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about BEA awards. I want to give a big shout out to Mary Lynn. Thank you for joining me today. It was lovely to have you on. It's lovely to have you on our team again. Um, and again, guys, if you guys want to slide into our DMs, feel free at Wella Canada West and at Chelsea.Wella is my Instagram. You guys can check me out, follow me, slide into my DMs. It's all good. Last but not least, guys, if you guys learned anything today, please remember that your knowledge is not yours. You're not the owner of it. You're only the caretaker of it. And it's wasted if you don't pay it forward. Remember that people gave you their knowledge free and clear, and it's your responsibility to pay it forward. I hope you guys stay safe out there. I hope we open up soon. Alberta, we're thinking of you. Ontario, we're thinking of you. Quebec, we're thinking of you. And we are in this together, guys. Pay it forward, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.